Welcome, everybody, to the Integrate Yourself podcast. We're your host, Allison Polo and Maya Gottlieb. Today, we're here with Katie Bowman. She, uh, if you guys don't know about Katie Bowman, uh, she's she's pretty much the what we like to call the Martha Stewart of movement. She has written seven books. <laughs> And, you know, four of which I have, uh, the four that I have are Move Your DNA, uh, Diastasis Recti, um, Dynamic Aging, and Movement Matters. Those, are, those last two are her latest books. Uh, we're so happy to have her on the show. Uh, it's such an honor. Katie, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. I think I need an explanation of the Martha Stewart. <laughs> and, I, I, and I was like... What? What is it about Martha? Like, what what are our overlaps? So, well, we can talk about that in a bit. <laughs> yeah, well, I think for me, it's like uh, you're just so creative with how you present movement to people, you know. And there's always like, it's always in such a like very uh, a neat way that's just like perfectly put together. So that's kind of why. I think of you as that because every time I see your Instagram or your, your the books that you put together, it's just like neatly put together and just so easy to understand. And it's just, it's beautiful. So thank you for putting that out there. Oh, well, thanks for that. Cause I'm like the opposite of neat. <laughs> well, I appreciate the comparison, you know, so I can definitely neatly package ideas, but it leaves behind it quite the, the wake and the, uh, it d displaces a lot of other things into basically mess all around me. So I'll just I'll just take the comparison and say yeah. thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Yeah, it's just the way I see the what you what you produce and what you put out there and it's always something that I'm kind of already thinking about but I ha you know I haven't really been able to like express it that way and it's just the way you express it is really really great and I appreciate it. I would really like to start, Katie, by asking you um, how you actually came into all this. Uh, I know that li uh, listening to your podcast, which, by the way, everybody, if you haven't heard Katie's podcast, Katie Says is the name of it, and it's it's an excellent podcast and really great information as well. She has a website called Nutritious Movement. Um, my question for you, Katie, is... Um, what, how did you get into this? How did you come into the conclusion to equate movement to nutrition and um, kind of like, you know, even getting to the point where you're like, uh, we really don't need to be sitting on furniture, you know, and, and moving from California to where you are now. And is it Sequin, Washington? Um, I don't know if I pronounced that right. But, um, <laughs> but, you know, it's just kind of amazing all the, you know, the conclusion, conclusions that you've drawn and come to with, with your work. And I was just wondering, like, what was the inspiration? What was the aha moment that led you to that? So you are looking at a 20 year body of work of processing. And, you know, when you, in, in like academics or, or really anything that you're pursuing for a long time, the complexity just gets deeper the longer you study something, you know? So I, I don't think it's different than, than anything else. Um, I think a lot of times we, there's like a superficial understanding of how something works and it seems to be fairly discreet, meaning just self-contained as a set of facts. But as you start to understand something and you understand the complexity, then you start to see it, um, from a more ecological perspective. I think ecology is the easiest way to, to just, it's a way that people understand like, oh yes, <clears throat> when you understand ecology, you realize that you're considering more parts. And the same goes for movement. Um, how I got to the nutritious movement, again, those are all fairly recent, you know, within the last three or four years of helping. Of, I found that t teaching movement through a nutritional lens just helped capitalize on the nutritional understanding. Yeah. Um, the groundwork that that nutritional science had already laid, you know, so like we didn't have to go through the 100 year or 500 year process of understanding how macronutrients and micronutrients and vitamins and minerals were identified and came to be. We all got them at, at the kindergarten level just saying, hey, you need vitamins and minerals so it all like we have this understanding but it's because it was put into our brains as children 
that we have a framework for it. We don't have that for movement. You know, no one was given that you need movement and the different types of movement as a seven-year-old or an eight-year-old. So it all seems radical and new to all of us hearing it at 30 and 40 and 50 and 60. But it is how information has always been given. Um, but I did capitalize on nutrition because nutrition and movement um, there's definitely a group of people who are interested in wellness as a culture and so they usually started with food first before they started with movement so it was a really easy way to instead of explaining all these complicated things just to say yeah you need a diversity of foods you need a diversity of movement here's how you can think about it and why and um, that's that's how I came to that conclusion was just going oh okay we know we need more movement, but we already had, it's not just enough movement because you could take endurance runners, right? And then you would find that for decades, people have been recon uh, recommending cross training. It's like, you can't only be an endurance runner. Do you have to do some strength? You have, definitely have to make sure you're going to stretch or else you're going to be more prone to injury. And then you go to physio and the physio is going, okay, runner who's also cross training, you know why your knee keeps tweaking, your back keeps tweaking, is you've got like this one muscle right here that's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. So here's some corrective exercises. So I just took all of that understanding that people are familiar with and said, this is the same thing we do with food. We balance macronutrients, we balance micronutrients, explained a little bit of the science behind why we need to do that. And voila, I had a whole paradigm of movement that, that just... The, the track was already set that could just drop right in. So it's just the understanding. And then, you know, like something about the furniture in my house or um, that is that ecological model of, hey, we're not just bodies moving around in a vacuum. You're moving around in your house. You are interacting with the temperatures, the furniture, the trees or not, um, the car. These are environments that are moving you. And so as you're thinking, when you think about something very deeply, you think about the context in which it's happening. And then I was like, okay, so you know the, the physiotherapy you've been getting for your knee and your hip? Well, let me show you the thing that you're doing in your regular life that kind of is creating the need for that. So that instead of just choosing more therapy, you could actually choose less of the thing that got you the need for the therapy. So it's just, again, a larger idea of trying to create strategies for people um, to help get them moving more, moving more of them, and also in enjoying their life more, you know, so that they're not dealing with like niggling aches and pains and they're not constantly stressed by the idea that you need to exercise more, but meanwhile, no one's really giving you any sort of Right. Days for that. I mean, like you get stuff like, oh, sitting is the new smoking. So you can't sit. But what are you supposed to do? If you live in a sedentary culture. There's no examples right. for how to not sit. There's no examples for what a house with less sitting looks like. So it's, I think a large part of my job is simply role modeling. Mm. Yeah. You know, basically um, giving up a certain amount of privacy of my own life to be able to show not only that it is possible, but um, how it can be done, how it can be done in a stepwise fashion. So that's that's where we are today. Well, yeah, I, I love the idea that you're a role model because that's where I find a lot of us have lost is that role model mm -hmm. that actually shows us how to integrate everything in. Because um, as you were talking, I was thinking about so many things that people are oblivious to in their habits and where they all of a sudden wake up to a pain and say, I'm not sure how this all occurred. And then they go to physio and they go to a physical therapy and then they do these work these little, um, you know, exercises to help themselves. But the, the issue is, is it doesn't last because it's just a spot of the time that they're trying to fix something and it hasn't really fixed the core issue. And in your book, uh, Movement Matters, I love that part that you talk about is about finding a mission for your own like family and your values. Because that really hit a core for me because if you really don't know how clear you are about your mission of your own life, like what do I value? What do I want to be see going on in my life? You won't go to that extent of saying, 
wait a minute, I don't need that chair, or I don't need that way of movement. I need to go this way because that enriches. And then what I kind of felt came from that was how you came up with the stacking and where that all has importance is because it's different from multitasking. Can you talk a little bit about all that? I know that's a, I a lot in there, but. <laughs> uh, well, so it's, we live in an expert culture, right? Where we don't have a lot of, we have full, I believe, intuition and upwellings all the time of like being driven into certain behaviors. And then on top of that, you have all of what your mind's telling you you should or shouldn't do based on what you read, you know? So you've got a cultural context going on. There's behaviors that you're doing simply because someone role modeled them for you. And I've been really tuned into this having little kids. I'm like, the things that they're seeing me do and the way that I'm answering questions are setting up their truths. Mm. Yeah. They don't have any way to know what is true or not. You know, like they just know what I'm doing. And I mean, nor do I know what I'm doing as being truth or not. You know what I mean? Like it's just, yeah. but, but that, that's the way that we work. Like we're handing down survival mechanisms, like from a biological standpoint, like I survived and this is my truth. So here are these truths and good luck, you know? <laughs> so you've got, you've got your parents' survival mechanisms or whoever you were around that community of people, you have their truths. And then you've got um, your own intuitive truths that maybe be conflicting with those other ones that you received. And then you have expert culture, which are people who are researching or who have other knowledge systems that have been um, amassed or grouped or figured out or derived. And then those are constantly being broadcasted. So you're constantly negotiating between all of them. And so like you're, you're, you're trying, <laughs> Every sec, every decision that you're doing, and there's 10,000 of them or more a day, minute by minute, you're making them. And you're, a lot of them are on autopilot, but they're still passing through all of these filters, whether you know it or not. And I just got to the point where trying to decide what's right or wrong, just realizing that right or wrong, there are no really inherent right or wrongs. There's mostly just how they're lining up with where you've decided you want yeah. to go. And so <clears throat> I was like, well, you know, I've had businesses for years. I've pursued academic degrees for years. And in all those scenarios, you have like some understanding of what your end goal is, right? You're not just, woo, this would be fun to do. Like you, you have these benchmarks that you're, Deciding like like you wouldn't want to take if you're trying to get a degree You wouldn't want to take a class that didn't get you towards that degree If you're going to school just simply to be exposed to something you didn't know before then taking things Outside of that degree curriculum would be the right decision. So you just have to decide What it is that you're trying to pursue and then your alignment points for your decisions if you will reflect that but I just recognize that like I didn't actually know where I wanted to go with my life. Like I, yeah. like, why did I even go to college? Just because someone told me that I should, you know, like, so, okay, I had those bullet points. And then like later on, I really realized that it was intuitively for me also where I wanted to go because I just had this deep craving for knowledge or this thing. So they, they, those two happen to reconcile, but there's been lots of things that I've pursued that I turned out like weren't in alignment with who I actually was inside. So I'm spending a lifetime letting those go at the same time as like learning how to tune in the receiver <laughs> a bit to my intuition, which I was actually kind of systematically trained to not listen to. So getting the skills for listening to that again. And then, of course, I love the pursuit of my own database of interests. And, you know, so I, I do that. But um, so mission statement was super helpful. Uh, it's in Movement Matters, the process of how to do it. And, like, you, I have a personal mission statement. And I have a family mission statement because you are a separate entity from your own family. And so you want to make sure that and, and you're and they're dynamic. Because yeah. as the people within your community or family change, they might need the entire family's mission statement to change to still be included within that family. Then that doesn't always 
happen. Sometimes like, well, the family does this. And then someone right. comes who's an outlier who's like, but then I can't be part of this family if the family's mission and my mission don't align. Are you willing in a couple's relationships, friendships, like you're constantly doing that. I just like concrete details on paper. And sometimes I feel like I have a total mission statement in my head. But if you, for years, I thought that I had a mission statement but it, I just didn't like I, I was fooling myself because it was still it was it took the work to fuse my own mind rather than just defaulting to again all those other things in my mind like what do you actually want what do you put it down on paper write brainstorm and it made it concrete and then now I actually had a beacon like I wasn't just fooling myself that I had a beacon so mission statements are great and um the, you're, the first part you're asking about role modeling like I I do think that we need role models. There's a lot of, like I said, expert. I, I have a hashtag that I use a lot, which is practice what you publish, because um, a lot of times experts or, you know, scientific pursuits or whatever, they're not necessarily tied to any application or people doing the thing, because when you actually do the thing, you discover the nuances. So maybe that's also part of my journey of how, how do I start linking these things up? It's because I'm actually doing it. Like I'm not a read the research, integrate right. the words and the data on paper that are very hollow. Mm. Yeah, I do it. And then when you do it, you have an in-situ or in-situational experience and you go, well, here's the seven things that no one mentioned when trying to do this. I also have a very, I mean, I've got tens of thousands of people doing it in their situ, in their situation. Right. And they'll say, well, here's something that you didn't consider that I found when I tried this thing, but then they communicate that with me and then that integrates in. So again, it's like a very large body. Like you have this very large network of people experimenting and feeding back. And so it's been very, it's just been very successful because not only do we get the diversity of movements, we get a diversity of people doing the movements in diverse contexts. And then your understanding of movement becomes quickly three dimensional. Yeah. And so that's, that's been that's just, just like Martha Stewart is never like Martha yeah. Stewart is on the backbone of a lot of other yeah. people doing lots of different things. So it's the same thing, you know, some brilliant yeah. line that I might write has maybe come from three or four different people who, when they explain their situation, I was like, Oh, of course, then X, Y, and Z. And then I can put X, Y, and Z in. So it's just a very large dynamic, um, loving group of people. Yeah. So it makes it really a good point about how much community is a part of your life and that, uh, that what you're doing yeah. is participating not only in this smaller community that you live, but in the world. And you talk about how even movement affects how you move in the world and what they, you take for granted in terms of who's doing the processing part you talk about, like how we process uh, a lot more than we realize out in the world. And then when we get a, we get the fine product, we're like, Oh, this is kind of cute and nice. And, but we didn't really see all the energy that goes into that little product. So I really like that part. Um, I was wondering about the stacking and the multitasking because you talk about how they're different <coughs> and how great that is because I think a lot of people may get overwhelmed when they say, oh, I'm going to multitask. Or if we talk about like the Martha Stewart thing is like, I can't do all that. That's too much. It's like having Julia Chai right. recipe and you're going, uh, do you know how many hours it's taking to prepare just to get started? Right, <laughs> right, right, right. right. <laughs> so, uh, so stacking so stacking is the solution in the end it's how you pursue the tasks in your life so i do think we are a multitasking generation right where there's so much to do that the most successful people figure out how to do many things at once right or at least two things at once where you um you know, take your phone calls while walking on your treadmill, you know, like, so you're getting your exercise and getting your calls in. And then maybe you're also babysitting your kids. So they're right there at the same time or you're, whatever you're doing, like you're doing lots of things at once. And that's fine, except you're never actually doing one of the things with multitasking research that they found is you're not actually doing multiple things at once. You're just switching your attention between three things very quickly. So you're never really present in the time space moment 
because you're leaving one thing while you do another thing. So stacking is a little bit different where you pick, um, you pick an activity, which might be different than the activity that you were normally selecting to meet a particular need. You're picking an activity that allows you to be in the moment where, where those three things that are happening at once are, are like the natural byproduct of the activity that you picked. And so an example, I'm just trying to think how I can make an example out of, so you, you want to cook. Like, so say you want to eat better, so you're cooking, um, and you've got this recipe. Well, and like I, you said, it's. I like that but, one you talked about the foraging, where you had in yeah. your own life, where you had that idea of whether to go get off the couch and w take that walk that you didn't want to take because right. you had that story part. Maybe that's a good example. I don't know. If well, I'm... foraging is a good example because, and so for me as a parent of small kids, I was like, every day I'm like, I have to exercise. Every day I'm like, I have to teach these kids something. <laughs> Not only just watch them, not only just to keep them from harm, but enrich their experience. Because we can all just put our kids in our house all day long and protect them from harm, or babe, watch them, mm -hmm. or meet some basic needs. Yeah. But there's, but then you're going, oh, I gotta be, I gotta find some curriculum or some books or some program to drive to on the other side of town yeah. that I, that I have to pay for, you know, like to to enrich them. And then you're also like, I have to cook. And then you're also like, I have to eat better. Like you have all, like all day long, all of these things are going through yeah. your head all the time. So I was like, okay, come on. These are modern issues. Like this was not something that had to be thought of before. Yes, Why? Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. Because the thing that you were teaching was a relationship with the land that would breed survival and the future generations. But the way you taught it was just because you were moving over the land and you yourself were surviving. So anyway, I was like, okay, well, I know there's an apple tree a mile and a half away. And so I'm going to put, I'm going to stack my taking a walk with me being with my kids in a very relaxed, fun, I'm outside. I've got the nature that we're all, not only I, the kids are supposed to have. Um, I wasn't planning on having apples as my stack today, but I'm going to now work with these apples because they're what's here. Oh, look, local organic produce for free. Awesome. And so, <laughs> so then just yeah. became this like two hour walk. And I could completely relax on the walk because it was meeting so many needs. And then what happens is when you actually do the thing, all these other hidden embedded nutrients reveal themselves, which is, hey, I just met three neighbors that I never met before. Right. Oh, yeah. my kids got to, um, you know, see a, a dead skunk on the side <laughs> of the road. And now it's like a biology lesson, you know, and, and a natural discussion, yeah. not me grabbing a book about something outside of their life, trying to teach them about the world, help them understand where they are and yeah. what's going on. And, and then climbing the trees and then the three mile walk and then the feeling of the two hours, like in a super de-stressed way. So like, that's the thing with nature, like na nature based activities are stacked. Like that's how we all got to this place is everything in nature is occurring at the same time. We're the only thing on the planet that pulls it all apart and then realizes that it needs the food and the sunlight and the water and the community and like, and then, and then trying to approach all those things individually because we broke it all down. And then we began to perceive that it happens broken down, not integrated. So it's just a way of integrating back towards some natural behaviors that again, meet, multiple needs like that's what stacking is it's a it's a term actually from permaculture which oh. is nature already nature already has been doing this it's only when you, when like humans came in like we're gonna farm and then like cleared all the plants and right. put in one type of plant and then had to bring back in water bring back in yeah. fertilizer and mulch and like made 12 tasks <laughs> where basically no tasks existed before the payoff for those new 12 tasks was a ton of one type of thing that it turns out couldn't nourish a person after all. So then we had to repeat the clearing of the one thing over and over and over again. Permaculture is like, now you can actually just grow it all in one yeah. space and just leave the crap on the ground because that holds the water. So now you don't have to 
harvest the earth for copper for pipes and bring those in like you're just doing more work than you need to need yeah. to because you don't understand how the natural systems work if you get a little bit of that knowledge your life can be not only meeting your needs in a more relaxed de-stressed way yeah that's an, yeah that's, that's an awesome explanation um yeah, yeah the um the whole thing with the i love that because um we do we do that in everything we make everything so much harder we make so much more work for ourselves and, and that's yeah it's just things nature really they have their own mechanisms for working uh naturally and that's what we talk about too my and i talk about with, when it comes to nutrition we we tend to make it much harder when your body can do a lot of these things already you know on its own if you just step out of the way so um you know i really do appreciate your work and your perspective on movement and that in that respect because like a lot of things that you talk about like just sitting on the floor every once in a while going for a walk you know yeah. uh, with kids even like you know just making it easier on yourself as a mom and letting them explore themselves and not trying to micromanage that is just a huge deal. That's a, that can be a big part of de-stressing and enjoying life. So yeah, that's great. I love I, that. I just wanted to add, um, with the authenticity, authenticity, I can't even say it. When authenticity. You're, authenticity. <laughs> um, I, I found in your book was when you really expressed how you didn't want to take that extra walk between the French class and <laughs> you realize uh, that you were on, by, based on your mission statement that that was in, in line with your uh, life and so that you reconsidered and then it turned it around. Can, you know, that's where uh, I'd like you to talk a little bit about, about how real it is, about how, how you have to go back to maybe getting to that mission statement to kind of funnel back the ideas that really enrich your life because we tend to want to sit on a couch because we don't have time or we are exhausted or we're this and that where we're kind of distracting ourselves from being able to focus on what we really want from life so one thing i think is unique about my work is to really call out the inherent sedentary nature of humans it's not a sedentary nature it's a conservation of energy nature that is in you and i believe will always be there it's a natural phenomenon is to not expend more energy than what's necessary so a lot again of what i do is to really call out how much time we go out of our way to craft habitats or environments that require we do less and then at the same time stress the entire time about our own will or our own motivation <clears throat> it's also we are in a time right now where I, we come in a particular generation where um maybe the generations before us didn't really tune in to how they felt about things so we are definitely a like check in with yourself and be guided by how you feel and behave based on that the issue though being you also have this sedentary nature that i don't know if it's a feeling as much as it's a natural phenomenon so almost everyone will feel better by not doing mm. Mm, so right. And I don't know if we have the skill to discern between those two. So I use my um, personal mission statement to go, you um, want more movement for you. You want more movement for your kids. You want more nature time. You want less driving time. These are all the things that not only you want, you define yourself by. And yet you want to sit on the car right now for 20 minutes and you have all these like things in your mind, like, Oh, the kids, they just need to rest. Right? Like we keep trying to justify yeah. why we should be still. That is our first reflex. I mean, when people hear these ideas, usually their first one is like, well, that's never going to work. <laughs> you know, like they, they have like all kinds of flags their brains are throwing. It's like, people can't do that. You can't get, you know, they're talking about people. It's not usually re re referred back to them. And it's like, yeah, it's hard to get moving. In fact, 
I actually think willpower is an artificial thing. So yeah. that's why I construct my environment so that I have natural discomfort around me. And I just had to lose my addiction to comfort. Mm. You know, like we have just, and, and even to watch myself with my kids, my desire for them to be comfortable is so strong, yet it's the discomfort where growth and movement happen. So we are at a place where we're associating comfort with love and our job or our role as preparation, but really you're just seeing this slow onset of sloth happening. So yeah. um, luckily my husband's really great at not being interested in being comfortable. <laughs> you picked and the so right I'm man. Just, you know, yeah. I'm, there must have been obviously an attraction there on some other level where I recognize that he would make my life uncomfortable and thus growth would be continuous. Mm. Yeah. And, and like, I'm just constantly checking back because my resistance is so strong. It's like, I just want this. Yeah. And he's like, really? And I was just like, no, not what I'm looking for. <laughs> but like all the, the movement and the change and the work, like I'm so sedentary in my deepest core, you know? So it's, um, that's great. That's, that's so interesting. That's yeah. awesome. I yeah. And I, I apologize for the feedback. Um, I think one of the things I loved about that is because that's taught in a lot of Zen meditation or any, any type of the spiritual side of it where they actually want you to pay attention to being how comfortable you is, is taking away from you. And yeah. so I appreciate that. Allison, you have. Some oh, uh, well, and I think also we get comfort confused with nourishment too. You know, it's, it's it, nourishment is is different than comfort, you know, comfort can be being uncomfortable can be a form of nourishment as well to, to, for growth as you know, in different forms. But, um, and that could be why, you know, you know, a lot of moms like want their kids to be comfortable and, 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 you know, but they don't learn from that actually. So there's, there's that, right. Um, and it, you know, it's hard as a mom, from my experience, watching your kids go through disappointment or, you know, or just not, things not working out. It really sucks to sit there yeah. and watch that, but they do learn from that. So um, that's, you know, they get so much from that that we don't realize until we hold space for that. And so, um, you know, as moms, we really, it's, it's hard, but you got to try it. Well, <laughs> and it's also it a there. symptom. Like, I feel like there's not a lot of people paying attention to my disappointment. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and so, like, it's yeah. just like, I don't want you to, like, that the feel that the disappointment and the feel maybe no one was maybe witnessing my disappointment. So, like, I want to be there to witness my own children's disappointment, but to not confuse it with trying to eliminate it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just, it's a, it's a, being a parent is the hardest thing ever. Yeah. You know, just in, in, in this day and age, this, I mean, I don't, maybe it's always been like this, but um, certainly because we have so much free time of not being concerned with really anything life or death in most yes. cases, yes. you know, that smaller things are heightened and they're important, you know, so anyway. Yeah. yeah. Just, just another category that I don't know anything on. So yeah. the generations <laughs> like, all, before like all parenting us, things, I'm like, I don't know. The generations before us really had a different way of living. And, uh, oh, sure. yeah, and, and, yeah. And, and always, and it goes on. Like it's, it's been coming to this for some time yeah. for sure. So we, we find the appreciation and the gratitude, but find out that, you know, what we always say, the small things don't matter as much as we think they do. So yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Well, I think we're at the end. What do you yeah. Guys God, this has been great. Thank you, Katie, again, for coming on the show. Um, if you guys want to find Katie, she has a podcast called Katie Says, as well as you can find her website at nutritiousmovement.com. I highly encourage you guys to go and check it out. It's a plethora of just great information and resources. Even like I was going to say, your newsletters are amazing because um, you know, you don't, you not only share what you're doing, but you also share like inspiration that you get or other things that you come across that you think people might be interested in. And I think that's not something that many people are doing. So I, you know, that that's really cool. And, and so 
as well. Let's see what else you have anything. I know you're, I saw something on Instagram where you're working on a new book. Is that true? I'm always working on a new book. Um, I've, I've given myself a, a full year off and then a kind of a year to assemble. So I've got eight other ones that people can start working with, but this one will be the big one of how to transition a life, a mindset, a body, a family, a community. Ooh, nice. So it's a big yeah. one. That's awesome. And you have your classes too, right? At yeah. your movement center. And do you still have the online classes going mm -hmm. on or? Okay. Yeah. Oh, cool. All right. There's so many ways to get moving. It's, yeah. it's just really possible. Yeah, absolutely. You give so many great examples and we appreciate you so much. Thank you, Katie, for doing what you do. Yeah. Thank you, both of you very much. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you. And thank your community for helping you. Cause, uh, yes, thank you, you know. to everyone out there who's yeah. ever sent anything. It's a, yeah. a, uh, even criticisms, like all those things help, you know, in the end, they yeah, just help sure. form and great. So a gratitude for everything. I'll have to come visit you out there sometime. Cause I'm not yeah, too far. Well, so yeah. yeah I and will. it's swim. Swim. They, I knew I, I, I was like, I know I'm going to mispronounce this and I know people from swim hate it when you mispronounce maybe. Cause that's what I I've heard. I don't know. With how I'm okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. I doubt that this place didn't come with the swim name, so um, it doesn't need to be yeah. called anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Katie. Well, thank Thanks, you friends. again. Thank All you. Right, nice bye. meeting you. Bye. bye.